Starting next Monday, some ERP rates will double on parts of the AYE and CTE in the mornings and evenings. Singapore was prepared to take legal action against the Indian composer who plagiarised a National Day classic. And a possible security breach involving the personal data of 30,000 people who've used the services of NTUC's Employment and Employability Institute. Hello, this is The Straits Times News tonight. I'm Dylan Ang. Good evening, I'm Chao Suan. Motorists will soon have to pay more when using two expressways. Electronic road pricing rates for some gantries located along the AYE and CTE will be raised by a dollar. The Land Transport Authority said that the increased charges will kick in from next Monday. The increased charges will manage congestion at certain stretches during peak hours. Now, the LTA added that it had observed heavy traffic on these stretches from 7am to 10am with the progressive easing of safe management measures as more return to the workplace. Following this round of adjustments, ERP will be charged at 12 gantries compared with 77 before the COVID-19 pandemic. The highest ERP rate is now $3 as compared to $6 pre-COVID. And motorists can expect even more changes with several proposed amendments to the Road Traffic Act. If passed into law, those who promote or take part in illegal street races will face larger fines and double the mandatory jail time. This comes in the wake of the fatal cra crash in Tanjung Paga in February that killed five men and an increase in the number of people caught for illegal racing. Another proposed change will make it an offence to ride electric bicycles on roads without passing a mandatory theory test. The test will cover path and road safety, a general code of conduct, as well as safe riding behaviour. The Ministry of Culture, Community and Youth was prepared, if necessary, to take legal action against Indian composer Joseph Mendoza, who plagiarised Count on Me Singapore. Minister Edwin Tong told Parliament today that the Ministry had also undertaken extensive fact-checking in both Singapore and India to refute the composer's claims. Mr Mendoza alleged that he had written We Can Achieve in 1983, years before Count on Me Singapore was composed and arranged in 1986. Now, the songs were almost identical except for some minor differences, such as replacing the word Singapore with India. Now, if it seems like everyone has been vaccinated but you, not to worry. Singapore residents aged below 45 can make COVID-19 vaccination appointments from June. Latest figures show that a total of just over 1 million individuals have received at least one dose of the vaccine as of April 3rd. They include eligible seniors above 70 and those aged between 45 and 69. The government says it has been encouraged by the strong response from the public. And Singapore will complete its vaccination programme as scheduled by the end of the year, provided vaccines arrive as planned. Our supply of vaccines remains limited by the availability of vaccine manufacturers to deliver, given the high levels of global demand. This has resulted in limited booking slots in recent days. I apologise for the inconvenience caused to those who have not been able to book earlier. As more supplies arrive, we will progressively open more slots. An update on the COVID-19 situation here. 17 new cases were confirmed today, all imported. There were no cases in the community or from migrant workers' dormitories. Data of about 30,000 people who have used the services of the National Trades Union Congress's Employment and Employability Institute may have been accessed by cyber criminals. The data of individuals who utilised E2I services or attended the Skill Training and Job Search Institute's events from November 2018 till 12 March 2021 might have been compromised. According to the Institute, crooks may have had unauthorised access to personal data that include the following people's names and NRIC, educational qualifications and contact and employment details. E2I was alerted to a data breach incident on March 12 in which a malware had infected the mailbox of an employee of an E2I appointed third-party vendor, contact centre services firm iVic International. 
Potentially affected users are being contacted through email, SMS and phone calls. And those affected should be vigilant for phishing attempts and any suspicious activities or requests. And the SMU molestation trial continues. The Singapore Management University student, accused of molesting a woman, testified that he didn't think she meant it when she said stop. Telling his side of the story in court today, Lee Yan Ru gave his account of what had happened in the early hours of January 8, 2019, testifying that he did not intend to outrage the woman's modesty. He had rested his feet on the woman's thighs, tried to kiss her repeatedly, touched her breasts over her bra, and even exposed himself to her during their overnight study session. But he thought she was fine with his advances. Lee, who was being examined by his lawyer, said, I thought as the night progressed, the woman and I were becoming more comfortable with each other, and she was completely fine with my advances. To me, and I believe her as well, we were getting more intimate. So I took out my private part to be more intimate with her. The trial continues tomorrow. Let's take a look at what's been trending on social media today. History was made at this year's Screen Actors Guild Awards with all four motion picture acting wins going to minority groups for the first time ever. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom was a double winner with the late Chadwick Boseman taking male actor in a leading role and Viola Davis taking female actor in a leading role. They were joined by the winners of the Best Supporting Actor Awards, Daniel Kaluuya for his role in Judas and the Black Messiah, and Yu Jong Yoon for her performance in Minari. Now that aside, no surprises on the television front as acclaimed series Shit's Creek and The Crown continued their award success. Shit's Creek won for Outstanding Comedy Performance and Best Drama Series went to The Crown. Concern over Asian hate in the US has spilled over to the rest of the world. Rallies have sprung up in Canada, Germany, France and New Zealand, amongst others. And now prominent celebrities outside the US have spoken out against the violence. South Korean pop group BTS has posted a letter expressing its support for the Stop Asian Hate movement. In both English and Korean, it said, We feel grief and anger. We recall moments when we face discrimination as Asians. We stand against racial discrimination. We condemn violence. You, I and we all have the right to be respected. Filipino senator and legendary boxer Manny Pacquiao also chimed in on Instagram, taking a different tact. He said, stop attacking Asians who can't defend themselves. Fight me instead. He posted, we have one colour in our blood. Stop discriminating. It's goodbye for LG phones. The South Korean electronics brand is said to be the first major smartphone brand to completely withdraw from the market. LG's smartphone division has logged nearly six years of losses, totaling some 4.5 billion US dollars. And the company said that dropping out of the fiercely competitive sector will allow them to focus on growth areas such as electric vehicle components and smart homes, among others. The brand's current global share is about only 2%, having shipped a reported 20 23 million phones last year compared to Samsung's 256 million. Before we go, well, not that we can really go anywhere now. While air travel hasn't taken off yet, here's something to look forward to. Singapore Airlines has launched a refreshed version of its iconic Batik print. Introducing the new Singapore Airlines Batik motif a Batik-inspired print with a modern touch. Staying true to the garden city where we were born, we took inspiration from 10 flowers native to Singapore and filled our Batik with it, bringing it to life with their unique colors and shapes. A heritage-inspired icon created with the same level of craft and attention to detail as you would experience with us in the skies. Welcome to the new Singapore Airlines Batik Motif. Singapore Airlines told Newsnight that the new Batik Motif will give the iconic SIA symbol a modern and contemporary makeover. While it will not replace the original Batik Motif of our cabin crew's iconic Sarung Kabaya, the new motif will feature in other aspects of the airline's branding and marketing, including merchandise as well as fiscal design elements and locations such as their lounges. 
Love it. <laughs> now, and that wraps up the Straits Times News Night. Do visit straightstimes.com to see more news and videos. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the button below. Have a great evening and we'll see you tomorrow.